Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining me as I explore the wide world of pens. And we're going to have an unboxing. I know what's in here. I've been following the tracking information. Again, we have JFK, New York City, but the return to is Englewood, California. This is that over label that's put on the pen when it arrives and I think goes through customs. So this is a standard padded envelope and it feels like they just have some bubble wrap on the pen. And just basic classic scissors. I try to avoid cutting anything. And then we have a nice bit of bubble wrap. Let's get it open. I know some people talk about pens arriving damaged or not in good shape. But I think, you know, it's not a, a very custom packaging, but it certainly works. And the pen is buried in here. We can see it making an appearance slowly. Oh, there we go. And as we extract it from the bubble wrap, we'll see it's a metal pen in a plastic sleeve, nothing else. And I think it looks great. Let's talk about how this pen came into my possession. I've had a nice relationship with uh, Easy Buy. They've uh, sent me some pens and when this pen uh, showed up on I think it was Facebook or whatever, I said I, looked, I like it and they said they could offer it to me at a slightly lower price and I said great I'll take it. So that's how it came into my possession. And here's the listing on Etsy. Comes in two finishes this is obviously matte, and if it was in the shiny, polished finish, it would be, I assume, like this clip looks. Nice, solid, substantial clip, feels to be spring-loaded. I like that little uh, kind of brass insert there at the bottom of the barrel. Pull-off cap, and we'll see an interesting nib, which is one of the things that appealed to me on this pen. Yeah, it's a different style of nib than I've seen before. Certainly on the small side, but as we know, it's how it writes that matters. Very seamless transition on the section to the barrel. And let's see how that unscrews. Oh, it's a piston filler. Wow, I had forgotten. So this comes out. I haven't looked about how you would remove it, but here's a picture of what the piston filling mechanism looks like. Very smooth operation. And I love the fact that those seams just kind of disappear. Very, very nice design. Well executed, decent weight to it, fits well in the hand, and as we would expect, this is the first time, it posts. And that whole flow of the lines of these pen of this pen really generates, stays pretty secure. So gee, what ink are we gonna use? What ink to put in it? Well, this one is the one that I selected. I have a bunch of these gemstone inks, and this is a black ink, and this pen, I think, could be an everyday writer, carry around pen, and I like to put black ink in those pens. And this is definitely a black, ashy color of ink. So let's see how it looks in the pen. So the pen's been inked up. This blind cap only takes a little bit over one turn to seem to move this piston the full distance. So I was wondering how much ink did it actually pull up. So I measure the barrel before and after filling it with ink, and it looks like it takes 1.2 milliliters of ink. So that's a decent fill. Certainly above average, but it's just a nice pen. And we're going to see how that nib writes. Well, the obvious pen to compare the TI-500 to is the TI-200. And they did a substantial upgrade to the pen. I like this matte finish better than this finish here. The clip is nicer. It's substantially bigger, and that's nice in my hand. Piston fill versus cartridge converter. Both have pop-off caps. And we'll see the other big difference is a hooded nib versus whatever you call that nib. Small. Interesting that the feed seems to be a similar type of design, and yes, there's a little ink on the end of that one. One thing that I noticed for both of these pens is when you uncap them, it's best to keep the nib up, because that 
can pull off some ink because both of those caps fit pretty well and may produce a little vacuum when you pull them off and that vacuum would pull out ink. About the same length but just the girth is so much nicer and the weight is about the same. Titanium is not the heaviest metal, not the lightest metal. It's kind of in between steel and aluminum. Let's compare to some other pens. I believe the nice brass wrench for the P136 works on this TI500. But what works on the TI200? In my exploration of AliExpress, I came across this offering. Moonman seems to be packaging a number of their assemblies in what appears to be an ink sample bottle. So you take off the lid, very secure way, and out comes two pieces of nice machine stainless steel. And we have a nice wrench, which is used in the TI-200 we see in these photos, to remove the nib assembly. I have no need to do that right now, but since I was making a purchase from a seller that had this available, I figured I would add it to my list, and I did. And I'm just impressed now that the many Chinese makers are coming out with these incredible tools to help you maintain or customize your fountain pen. So here we are with a Pelican M800, and the TI500 holds its own with that. And I have the M800 here because I was at the Pelican Hub, the one that was near me. Got to meet up with some of my fellow New Jersey pen nerds that I haven't seen for a while. It was a fun night. And I got some good draft brew from a local brewery. And here's an all-star. Here's a Pilot Metropolitan, which is diminutive in this series of pens. Keep in mind, if you're interested in the TI-500, it's a good size pen. So now we're in my semi-dark mode. It is daylight, and there is a strong sun outside. Very clear winter sky. No warmth to it, but certainly a lot of light. I think this pen is excellent in the hand. That's a very, very secure capping motion. And once that cap is on the barrel, it doesn't turn or twist. It's extremely solid. And I think that's one thing that justifies the higher price of this pen. Let's look inside the cap and see what we can find with the LED. It's a full plastic liner. It's black there. And then into, towards the top, there's a kind of white, kind of silicone looking insert, which I'm assuming is what does that capping motion on the bottom of the section. As you can see, there's a little bit of a groove there. So my guess is, is that is what snaps into that liner and really is secure and yes the pen is inked up again extremely nice pen I'm impressed when I use a black ink for everyday use I like to know how water resistant it is so here I've written with the TI 500 on copy paper there's a little bit of feathering I wouldn't call it severe but certainly it's there if you flip it over there's a little bit of uh, bleed through, but mostly show through. So then we switch to Toma River paper. Obviously, no feathering. And if we flip it over, no bleed through and not as much sew through as you would expect. The other thing I find interesting is a lot of people do ink reviews and show you what the ink looked like. And one of the, the things that I think people do is write on different types of paper. So to my eyes, the ink definitely looks different on Toma River than it does on copy paper. This line is a little wider because you've got some spread from the ink absorbing into the paper more on copy paper than Toma River. Toma River is known for not absorbing ink at all and relatively slow dry times. But the, the ink, I would say, more is on a dark gray side than a black. At least that's my view from looking at these samples. We're going to dip them in water and see how they perform. So we're going to try something I haven't done before. We're going to dip both of them at the same time into this pan of water and see what happens. 
we see movement on Toma River right away. These have dried for about two hours. I normally let them dry overnight, but nah, I wasn't in the mood to wait. And interesting, on copy paper, we don't see as much. We're going to let them set for a few more minutes and then pull them out and see how much ink is left on the paper. So about five minutes has gone by and we see a little bit more ink has come off of the Toma River paper, but the copy paper has survived very well. I'm impressed. Let's do a little swishy swish, but we still are very readable on Toma River. So I'd say the water resistance of this onyx ink is pretty good. I think it's a pigmented ink from the way it looks. And uh, pigmented inks apparently bond to cellulose, depending upon their makeup, very well. And we see an example of the water resistance of this ink. So what better way to talk about the pen when it's rotating on a turntable held up by a crab. So let's give you the dimensions of the pen so you can put things in perspective. I think it's a good size pen. I think it's a right size pen from my hands and my writing. I do like the pen. I think they did an excellent job. And to me, I'm impressed with Moon Man Mahjong as they elevate, update, and come out with new models that are significantly improved. And the models that they're based on were good to begin with. So there wasn't a lot of room for improvement, but they certainly found things to add. A brass piston filler, which looks very familiar to another Mahjong uh, piston filler. And it seems to take uh, that Mahjong tool. So it can be removed, but I didn't do that. I wanted to ink it up and write with it. And speaking of inking it up and right with it, let's go do that. Mr. Crab is going to rotate around and give you all a winky wink. Because he enjoys his job of holding up the pen. So for those that might have missed it earlier in the video, to snap off cap, very secure, takes zero turns to snap it off. And it has a unique section, well not unique, but certainly... I don't have many pens like that. It fits well in the hand, uncapped. Feels great balance. I mean, it's a decent weight, but you don't notice it. And for those that enjoy posting, this is designed perfectly to post. A plastic liner inside really secures the cap to the end of the barrel. So that's my quick update. Let's put nib to paper. I think as you heard, or didn't hear, this nib just works perfectly. Yes, it's a fine nib. It's not going to flex. But the way it feels on paper is great. And it does what it's supposed to do. Put down a nice, consistent line of ink. Definitely can be an everyday carry. Fairly indestructible. Fairly reliable as far as all those parts go. Holds a decent amount of ink. Certainly should last anybody for a full day of writing. And that makes it a perfect everyday carry. My TI-200, which has similar design elements, that nib writes first time every time I uncap it. Could be sitting for a month. And I expect the same results from this pen.
So the TI-200 has been in constant use since I first got it. Writes first time every time. And it's a consistent writer. I know there's a lot of fixation and focus on like great nibs that are not a nib that you're going to use every day in and out on all types of paper. And these nibs are those types of nibs that you can use day in and day out on all types of paper and have a consistent writing experience, feels good in the hand. That's what it's all about, folks. Now, I'm kind of avoiding rating pens. I think we need to move on to a different way. I give this thumbs up. I heartily recommend it. But you gotta like, you know, a metal pen. If you don't like the matte finish, it comes in a polished finish. I just prefer the matte. And I think it's just a lot of nice little details in this pen that I certainly appreciate and I'm very happy to put it into my collection. So thank you all for watching. I hope this video finds all of you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, finding a pen that really rocks your boat, floats your boat, depending upon what you enjoy, and encourages you to put ink on paper. That's the important thing, and that's why we have these writing instruments. Ah, just enjoy this one. So, this is the end, and we're going to say bye. I have a lot more pens to review. I have some in transit, some interesting surprises. Stay tuned. See you soon.